Game on! Game on! He shoots, he scores! Oh! One for one! That is going wild! Car! Car! Game on! Game on! Welcome to the Productivity is Podcast. I am your host, Mike Vardy. It's been a great weekend. We just had a long weekend here in Canada, and I joined my friend Brooks Duncan over uh, on Salt Spring Island. Our families hung out together. It was an awesome time, and uh, we played some tabletop games. That was what we brought with us, and that's what I'm going to talk about this week in the episode. Uh, I have an interview with Dave Kahlo, who, uh, you know, he's he's someone I've been known for a while. You know, he hosts the Homework Podcast. And we'll get into more of what he does there along with Apple World Today and all that stuff. But um, I mentioned at some point online that, you know, I was getting into tabletop gaming. And he chimed in and and we had a conversation over Twitter. And I said, you know, this might not be a bad idea for us to explore this. Because I think that there's elements of gaming that really can help you up your productivity game. Maybe not directly, but certainly indirectly. And we want to get into that in this episode. Um, I want to thank everybody that's been, you know, rating and reviewing the podcast on iTunes. If you want to give it a rating and review, please do. Uh, It's a really big help. It helps people discover the podcast. Let's just dive into things. Uh, Let's get into the fun and games. Let's talk about gaming and how it can help your productivity and help you just live a more balanced, I guess, life. Uh, Here's Dave Kahlo with me on the Productivities Podcast. Enjoy. All right, I've got Dave Kahlo with me, uh, and I wanted to talk to Dave about some cool stuff that you may not think is traditionally productivity related. Um, Dave is going to explain a little bit what, about what he does, and and, and but I, I know that uh, he hosts uh, co-hosts homework with Aaron Mankey, which is one of the the podcasts that's an essential part of my podcasting diet, uh, along with this one, of course. Uh, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> thanks for thanks for uh, taking the time to talk with me today. Well, I'm very happy to be here, and thanks for your kind words regarding homework. No problem. So, where, so for people who don't know who you are, uh, and then we'll get into what we're going to talk about. Where, what do you do? Where can people find you? That kind of thing. I know we'll recap this at the end, but it just gives the people a, a bit of a primer as to who you are. Because um, yeah, I know we're doing some stuff together, some top secret sh- stuff with Productivityist, mm-hmm. but uh, there's some other stuff that you've, you've got out there that people should definitely pay attention to. That's right. Um, right now, I am serving as the editor in chief at Apple World Today, which you can find at AppleWorld Today. We are a site by and for sort of entry level and intermediate uh, uh, customers of Apple's products and services. Um, I also write a weekly, well, almost a twice weekly now, um, article on organization and productivity over at Unclutterer dot com, and those are the two places you can find me. And of course, I'm David Kahlo on Twitter. And when you're not doing that, you can be doing something that, you know, it's funny. It, it doesn't seem like it would be a productivity help or wouldn't, it, you know, it, it, but it, it is. And it's something I've just started doing. And you've been doing this for a while, but it's board games. You play board games. I play the daylights out of some board <laughs> games. I really do. In fact, I was with my group last night. We get together on Mondays and Thursdays to play games. Wow. See, I don't. I mean, we. I've got a, a couple of guys that get together. With me, the guys that I was in a comedy troupe with years ago. We get together about once a month. Um, and actually, we, we're due to get together. I think we missed April just because of the holidays and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But um, this is something that's pretty new for me. My, my sister in law is a big board gaming you know fanatic mm-hmm. and recently in our in our city in victoria they, there was a board game cafe that opened and our city isn't very big it's got about three hundred thousand people in it um mm. and it it took off uh and the reason that i knew this was opening is that the 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 one of the co-founders is actually uh the father of one of my daughter's schoolmates so oh, okay. it, it, it spread around the school pretty quickly we went downtown it's not very far for me to get there and they they have food there and they have these specialty milkshakes but the cool thing is is that i could go in and play board games and and the board games i grew up with were you know like the game of life and risk and and connect for like all the monopoly all the all the staples but i mean recently i've jumped into a whole bunch of 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 different board games cuz th- they've made some huge advancements in board games that's so tr- true it's it's amazing in fact to the point where 
there are designers' names on the board games, like such and such by this person. And people are like, oh, my God, have you ha- tried the new game by so-and-so? Like, it's become, um, you know, uh, a, a, a big deal. It has. And it's become a, a, a really big deal. And it's funny how you mention how you can follow a certain game designer uh, uh, around and um, find the games that he likes because that's something I absolutely do. There's a designer named um, Antoine Bauza uh, who does games, and he's done many of my favorite games, um, one called Rampage, one called Takedo, mm-hmm. um, and a bunch of other games that I think are so much fun. And when I see his name on a box, I'm immediately intrigued. He did. Hana- I, he I did, want to see what he did. He did Hanabi too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Which we, and, and that's the other thing is the card games have kind of infiltrated that. Like, I mean, I was kind of always hesitant to to go into gaming for the simple reason that Magic came along, and Magic kind of like those card you know deck building games kind of really had a huge uprising and board games really in my mind weren't as as high ranking but now all of a sudden they seem to coexist quite happily they certainly do a lot of people will use the term tabletop gaming now just to include um games that aren't don't have a board in pieces right so you can say card games or um family games or party games um we'll just use the term tabletop game to mm-hmm. include all the options that we might play and, and will wheaton's uh tabletop probably popularized the term for people who weren't really into the gaming uh you know gaming i, w- I don't want to say industry but the gaming kind of the hobby uh yeah because uh i've been watching it in fact a lot of the games i've purchased and we've just started to do this so i'm i'm i'm, I'm not a huge i have i have a few hobbies um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but one of them, obviously I have the beer cellar, kind of like Gabe, Mac Drifter. Yeah. Uh, I have, I, I have a nice selection of bourbon upstairs, um, which I think is, is, is required as a writer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. So if non-writers don't know this, but when you decide to become a writer, someone pulls you aside and quietly tells you, you must have a nice bourbon collection exactly. somewhere in your house. Exactly. <laughs> and then the third thing that's fairly recent, I mean, I and I have my Green Lantern, to, like all the stuff that's kind of more visual avatar stuff, but board games have been pretty recent, and it happened because I played Takedo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was, uh, I saw the game, and it was just, it's just a gorgeously designed game. And it's not traditional, like you don't roll dice, and you don't, and I mean, there's there's some intricacies to it that are just really really cool, and we played it. And I and you know my buddy uh, Ryan, who basically said we should all get together to play board games. He had like that game. He has um, he, he got K- uh, King of Tokyo, I think it is. Uh, a few yep. others. Ticket to Ride, of course, is very popular. Um, we played mm-hmm. Ticket to Ride Europe, which is a bit more you know has a bit more uh, you know a, a few more advanced rules to it. But I saw it. I'm like, you yep. know what? This is something cool that. I can play with my kids because we have we have the Xbox. We don't have an Xbox One or anything. We barely play it, and there's reason for that. We just have so many other things we, we're doing. And my son and my daughter are starting to get that age where screens are becoming more of a factor. My daughter has an iPod Touch. She likes right. to use it. I want to keep her away from it as much as – not as much as possible, but I want her to treat it responsibly. Same thing with my son who's four right. who sees my daughter play with it. So we have these board games, and – and I thought this is a perfect gateway. But not only that, it, it I think using like playing board games puts you in that analog kind of thinking mode. Do you know what I mean? Like it puts you in this and yes. planning and strategizing, which is definitely tied into productivity and workflow. I think that's that's something that we take for granted, you know, a lot of the time. Yeah, I think one of the great benefits, if you want to talk about uh, the benefits to your productivity that you can get from taking time out to play games with friends is just time to process. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're online all day like I am, and I'm sure you are, and I I imagine many of your listeners are, and you've got um, this or that social um, channel open and you're reading blogs, you're reading news sites, um, you're getting texts from whoever, there's a lot of in. And I think you really can't make sense of in unless you have time to shut it off and then process what happened today, what am I going to think about this or that, Um, what am I going to do in the future with this or that project. And playing games really gives you time to be analog and process that sort of thing. And it's funny because a lot of the skills that you'll use and exercise while playing games with friends are the same that you'll then use during your workday, your professional life, like um, thinking three moves ahead, if you will, mm-hmm. or planning or collaboration if you're playing a cooperative game or strategizing or um, a whole host of things that um, might not seem like 
they're helping your professional life, but they most certainly are. And the great thing about these kind of games, as opposed to, as opposed to say video games, which are there, I mean, they're not on a screen. You're not, right. you, you know, you're, you're getting this analog, you're, you're actually touching the game pieces. And, and the, the other thing that I, I really like about the idea of, you know, gaming and having gaming nights is that each of these games are, they're a system. There's frameworks involved. Sure. there and, and, right. and, and, and great games, uh, will have a different have long shelf lives that they're, they're they're you know like ticket to ride is a great example you know i mean you could play that game ad infinitum and the results are going to be consistently different and it's not a super long game to play either by comparison to say like mm-hmm. remember when we play risk i remember playing risk and you'd leave the table set up for yeah. like the next day. <laughs> we like, used okay, to don't... do the same with monopoly my yep. parents would say i've had it for the day let's resume tomorrow yeah exactly but a lot of the games, and my wife's not a huge board game fan, but she'll play them if they take 30 to 40 minutes. Because it's not, a, yeah. I mean, th- so the time investment can be short. And a lot of these games that are, we're seeing are designed to cre- create that that pause. You know, that, and not, not an extended, some are, some are like super incredibly long and, and involved. But others, mm-hmm. like my son is a huge fan of... Uh, Hey, uh, hey, that's my fish. I think is what it's called. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, it, it, for for that game, it's you know, I mean, my wife likes it because it's short. It actually takes longer to set up than to play. But, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but we've also like had variations. Like instead of actually looking at the fish that you can jump on, we've turned all the pieces over. So the mm-hmm. only pieces that are avail- visible are like the ones with the single fish, and then after that, you're moving to different directions, and you don't know how many fish you're going to get at the end. All you know is that you're going to get, you know, because I know there's two ways to play it. So we, right. we do it that way. And, and for my son, who's four, we'll play it so that you can see the fish, so that way he can have a better chance to win. And you know, I mean, because he, he, we're still learning that, teaching him that process. The collaborative game, his favorite game is Castle Panic, because oh, that's a that's a big hit. Yeah, because no one, you either all win. Or you all lose, you know. So it, it there's no like I want to win. I want like if you lose, it's the game that wins, you know. And I right. lo- pandemic's another one. And you're seeing mm-hmm. so many more of these games that have high replay value, which means you can get a lot of shelf life out of them. Whereas you know, I mean, video games you get that to a point. iOS app games you get that to a point. But there's something about that community and that and that that social component that you're not going to get that FaceTime. Uh, you know, no pun intended in terms of yeah. like, that you're going to get <laughs> with, with these kind of games that I, it, it's difficult to replace. And if you play a great game, it's such a, an awesomely rewarding experience. Absolutely. And it's funny how you mentioned um, some of the games you've mentioned just right away are cooperative games yeah. uh, like Castle Panic and Pandemic. Castle Panic, um, for those who are unfamiliar, it's a circular board and in the center is the castle. And from um, just maybe like several concentric rings and the bad guys come in a little bit at a time towards your castle and you have to prevent them from taking over. It's a what's called a tower defense game. And there are many tower defense video games, but very, very few tower defense board games. When I think is this is a great way to transition a, a video game fan mm. over to a board game because here's a mechanic or, you know, how it works that you're familiar with and it's going to be fun. Pandemic is another great one where um, you're trying to spread I'm sorry, stop the spread. <laughs> you, and you never <laughs> of a, do. <laughs> of a, I know. It's of a so global hard. disease and you have to move from continent to continent and try to contain it. I said spread because there is now a version where you get to play as the virus yep. and you're trying to beat the other people. But these are cooperative games where um, – and I currently teach a, a board game after school club at my daughter's middle school. And I'm introducing different types of games per week. And they were really intrigued by cooperative game because they haven't seen that before. Where mm. in a competitive game, I'm trying to win and I'm trying to beat you and the other people at the table. Where like you said, with a cooperative game, it's all of us. We're trying to beat the game. Some games are so tricky, I say, that you've got to team up to beat them. And if one person wins, if one person runs out of water and you know dies of thirst in the desert, then we all lose. And that, I mean, talk about what a great team building exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, not only do you have to make sure your companions are okay, it takes a lot of planning. Like um, there's a game called Forbidden Desert and there's one called Forbidden Island where in Forbidden Desert, 
your uh, escape vehicle, the parts are scattered all throughout the sand. And there's a storm coming and the sand is piling up and the sun is beating down. And you have to get all the pieces and put them back together before you can escape. And each player has a special ability. One is really good at carrying water. Um, one is good at removing sand. One can move diagonally while no one else can. So you can see where the part is and you really have to plan. Okay, well, um, if I meet you on this tile, then I can hand you this tool and then you can use it to carry him over because he's good at removing sand and it becomes this whole thinking ahead, planning your steps and um, really using teamwork to to win the game. And it's a lot of fun and people who haven't played that type of thing um, really seem to enjoy it. I also think that these kind of games, and, and I mean, again, there's there's so many different type of board games out there. Now. I mean, you go to this board game cafe, and there's so many there, and it's it's. I mean, you want you now have the capability, thanks to the internet, and thanks to you know uh, to to the you know the the uh, the founding of these cafes to be able to kind of check a game out and see if it's going to be working for you. So, like, if you're for me, one of the things I've done is I'll watch tabletop on on Geek and Sundry to see if it's a game that yep. I want to play. You know, like like concept. Concept is a game that I'm tempted to buy, which is it's kind of like, I guess you would describe it as kind of a Pictionary. Would it be Pictionary esque? I guess or no, no charade. More yeah. like yeah, like a charades Pictionary kind of game. Mm-hmm. But but Will Wheaton describes it as, a, as one for writers. I'm sure you, me, Aaron, and 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 a bunch of us could sit down and play that game, and it would be hilarious because it's just for one sure. of those. But but I wanted to see how it was played, and they do it in an entertaining way that kind of gives me a sense of okay, I may want this game or I may not want this game. And then you hear these games like Cards Against Humanity, which I own. Um, and I, mm-hmm. did you go to XOXO Fest when when they were there the the first year? Uh, I think it was that one of the founders was there and spoke at XOXO. Um, very bummed to say I did not. But but it's it's one of those things where they've created this game and it took off like wildfire. And I I watched Car- the Cards Against Humanity episode with Will Wheaton. Uh, and Aisha Tyler was on it, and it wasn't because I didn't know how to play the game. I wanted to see how they played the game, and then right. I, you know, so you get these, th- th- and the, of course you'll go to a board game cafe and you'll see like this one game being played, and you'll be like, okay, well, let me see how they're playing it, and sometimes you can even join in. So it it, yeah. it really creates this uh, the, this renaissance of board games. It, to me, is is so awesome because it's 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 creating a an atmosphere where people can kind of relax display some critical thinking elements and i think honestly promote neuroplasticity as much as i don't have any scientific evidence to necessarily back that up but i'm saying that if you if you're taking a break from the regular rigmarole of working on screen and dealing with problems all those inputs as you said and then all of a sudden you're dealing with how do i pick up all these different parts for this for for the the escape vehicle and i got to make sure that you know i get the as the dispatcher i get this guy to here it creates a different way of thinking which actually is healthy. Yeah, because you're doing something else now. You're giving the uh, those work skills a chance to rest and process what happened during the day while you're engaging these other skills in this in this other activity. So it, I, I think it, it's a. I, I know I look forward to it <laughs> very much because not only the, it allows me to exercise those uh, skills, it allows me to give the other work skills a break for the day. And I'll say there's no better way to get to know someone than to play board games. With them. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has done really well against uh, on cards against humanity. She wins every time. It says something about her character that she's able to do that. <laughs> We're all like, wow, I can't believe you played those two cards together. Wow. Um, what if, if people are getting, if people are getting started out um, because you've been doing that, you, if you've been doing this for a while, uh, what, what games do you recommend people look at to start? Maybe, like, give me a couple examples. Sure. I think this whole board game renaissance that we're experiencing right now is due in large part to a single game called Settlers of Catan. Um, this is sort of an area control game. So what that means is it's a big... Oh, I'm going to embarrass myself. I think it's an octagon. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't remember this shape right now. And um, there are various tiles in the area, and you gain control um, of each area. And you have to channel water and gain um, certain, uh, what are the worst, assets. And then you use them to uh, better your chances of winning. Just as this is a super nutshell version of the game. But it's something that you can learn in just a minute. The tiles are placed randomly. So like you said, it's new every single time. It's fun enough to... 
you want to play more and more and it's really, really easy to learn and lots of people know it and it's, it's wildly popular because it is such a well done game. So that's a great game to start with if that's something you're looking for. You also mentioned um, King of Tokyo earlier. Um, this is a game uh, by Richard Garfield who's done a whole s- slew of things including Magic the Gathering. Um, this is a cooperative game that's best with four or five players, and um, it has big, chunky dice, which are fun to throw, and you get to play uh, like a movie monster rampaging through Tokyo. And um, it's sort of cooperative and sort of not. Each player will take a turn being in Tokyo, and the other monsters will attack him or her, and then um, that person will come out, and then you'll gang up again. And the, there's two ways to win, which is nice, either be the last monster standing or just um, reach 20 points first. There's another version of King of Tokyo called King of New York, which I like a little bit better because it's a little more in-depth. You play in all five boroughs of New York City, and there are a couple new mechanics that uh, make it a little more fun, a little more enjoyable. And finally, if you're looking for something very different, I will recommend a game um, you suggested earlier, uh, which is called Takedo. Basically, you're having a walk along the legendary Takedo trading road in Japan, and the player who has the richest experience is the winner. And the rich experience is defined by talking with locals, um, eating some great food, buying some cool souvenirs, observing beautiful vistas. It's really an atypical game. It's a nice slow pace, and the pieces are really, really pretty. I think those are three or four really good games to get started with. Well, considering that I just wrapped up 10 days with you know just me being with my kids... Uh, it, one of the things that we're going to try to do more often is have like board game experiences here. We, we've got some deck building games that are a little bit more challenging, but we've got like Castle Panic and, 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 and Hanabi, which is another great, it's, it's an interesting card game as well. And I don't want to give away too many games because I think what we should do, Dave, and we talked about this a little bit, uh, a couple, I think it was about a, a month or two ago is that I, what I'd like to do is, is every once in a while, I think you should pop on and say, Hey, here's a game that, you know, I recommend. And here's a game that you should try to play. Uh, Come on the podcast and we can kind of just talk about some of the games that, that, you know, are out there, either new or or well-established, that people who are trying to get into that, uh, kind of into that space, will will be able to try. Because I do think that there's some real, real benefits to, you know, giving this a try, taking time to schedule, you know, monthly or, or, you know, whatever... Uh, you know, bi-monthly or whatever kind of experiences to get together with people and just play these kind of games, whether they're, you know, deck building or whether like any kind of tabletop game. So um, with that said, would you be up to doing that? Would you be up to uh, coming on every once in a while and just kind of saying, hey, you know, yeah, here's a, here's a game I've tried or here's a couple of games that I recommend that people put through the paces? I think that sounds like great fun. I'd, I'd be thrilled to do it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, what we're going to do then, we'll wrap up. Uh, again, uh, what I would recommend to a lot of people, if you're especially new to this, not only just try those games that Dave mentioned, but go to the go to YouTube and look up Geek and Sundry and watch Will Wheaton's Tabletop. Watch them play. They play Settlers of Catan on there. They play Takedo. They played King of, King of Tokyo. Uh, they played like a lot of the popular games that are out there, um, including a few that you may, you know, some of them, some of them are more complex. And, and, and some of the cool things is that they sometimes screw up and they play them wrong. And then they, mm-hmm. he, he reminds you, he's like, uh, by the way, we played this wrong. So you may want to try this. You may not want to try this, but um, I would recommend that. And then, yeah, you know, yeah. If, you, <laughs> if you've got, a, <laughs> if you've got a board game cafe in your, in your neighborhood, pay it a visit. I mean, it's for me, where we have ours, it's I think it's five dollars per person, and you could be there as long as you want, and I'm like, that's like you know that's better than the arcades that we used to go to as a kid. Oh, that's great. So, so anyway, um, we'll wrap this up right now, Dave. Where can people find you online? And, and oh my goodness, and, yes. <laughs> <laughs> where where can people find you online? And and uh, you know if, if there's any other resources you can think of for people to look up, uh, share them with them now. Sure. Well, you can find me at uh, appleworld.today. That is a day job. And you can find my articles over at unclutterer.com uh, twice a week. I am David Kalo on Twitter. And I'll give another shout out to another great gaming channel on YouTube. It's called Watch It Played. It's less um, fun, I guess, than uh, tabletop, but it really goes into the rules. And after watching a video, you will have no doubt about how to play a given game correctly. It's a great one. 
Well, that wraps up this week's episode. A bit of a different topic, but we're going to cover some of those from time to time. Uh, I thought, you know, um, it's, it's for me, I want to learn more about this kind of stuff too because I think that, you know, video gaming is one thing, but I think you need to take breaks. And if you're going to take breaks and you want to have some kind of social connection with them or some learning processes behind them, tabletop gaming is one way to go. Now, if you are supporting the podcast via Patreon, then you would have gotten an additional 18 minutes of me talking about gamification in task management apps because in other productivity apps because I talked a little bit about the idea of um, what happened with uh, you know habit tracking apps that, that you know use that kind of uh, motivation. And uh, you get that at the front end of that podcast if you are supporting Patreon at the uh, – whether you're supporting at the $1 level or the $50 level. It doesn't matter. You're going to get access to that. Uh, if you support at the $5 level or above, you're going to get access to it earlier. You would have got access to it before I went on vacation. And uh, yeah. Uh, so if you're willing to do that, just go to patreon.com slash productivityist. There's lots of perks there that you can sign up for. We've had quite a few people jump on board in the past few weeks. There's been some consistent growth there, and we'd love to have you join us there. Uh, we're looking forward to deliver more quality episodes over the next few weeks and beyond. And if you're interested, again, like I said off the top, please leave a rating or review in iTunes or your podcast aggregator of choice. So that way we can uh, get feedback from you and also if you wanted to send me an email at mike at productivityist.com i'll gladly uh, respond to feedback there as well uh, the patreon community has a built-in community so we can do all that there but if you're not you're, if you're not able to support at that level in a monetary fashion then just drop me a line or leave a rating and review and that'll let us know what we're doing right what we could do better with and also will help people find the show that's it for this week we'll be back next week with a shiny new episode uh, until then uh, I'm Mike Vardy of Productivityist, and keep moving things forward. Take care.